Eureka by John Thomas, Volume 1 Chapter 3, Section 3 To the Angel of the Ecclesia of the Laodiceans Also to the Angel of the Ecclesia of Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the witness faithful and true, the beginning of the creation of the deity, I have known thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. Would that thou wert cold or hot. Thus because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I am about to vomit thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest I am rich, and have abounded in wealth, and have need of nothing, and hast not known that thou art the wretched, and pitiable, and poor, and blind, and naked one. I counsel thee to buy from me gold which has been refined by fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white garments, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness may not be apparent and anoint thine eyes with salve, that thou mayest see. Whomsoever I love, I discipline and admonish. Be zealous, therefore, and change. Behold, I have stood at the door, and I knock. If any one may hear my voice and open the door, I will enter into him and will sup with him, and he with me. The victor I will give to him to sit with me on my throne, as I also vanquish and sit with my father on his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hearken to what the Spirit saith to the Ecclesias. Topography of Laodicea Laodicea, the city of the seventh ecclesia addressed by the Spirit, lay south of Philadelphia in the way to return to Ephesus, so that it will be found, upon an inspection of the map of Asia Minor, that the seven ecclesias laid in a kind of circular form so that the natural progress was from Ephesus to Smyrna, from Smyrna to Pergamos, from Pergamos to Thyatira, from Thyatira to Sardis, from Sardis to Philadelphia, from Philadelphia to Laodicea, and from Laodicea round to Ephesus again, from which it was distant about 42 miles south, which is the method and order the Spirit hath observed in addressing them. That there was a flourishing association of believers at Laodicea in the first century is evident from Paul's letter to the Colossians. In chapter 4, verse 15, he exhorts them to salute the brethren which are in Laodicea, even Nymphas, and the ecclesia which is in his house. He appears also to have written especially to the Laodiceans, for he tells the Colossians to read the epistle obtainable from them. The ruins of the city show it to have been very large, situate in a volcanic region upon seven hills and encompassing a large space of ground. Some notion may be formed of its former greatness and glory from three theatres and a circus which are remaining, one of which is very fine, as it was capable of containing about 30,000 men, into whose area they descended by 50 steps. 
Laodicea is now called Eski Hisar, or the Old Castle. In its apostasy, the ecclesia in this city became the metropolitan, or mother church, of sixteen bishoprics. Yet it is now desolate, and not so much as inhabited by shepherds, but is become a habitation only for wolves, foxes, and jackals, a den of dragons, snakes, and vipers. Thus we have in the Ecclesia of the Laodiceans, in the fullness of its apostasy, a mother of harlots, sitting upon seven hills, and because of its spiritual misery, poverty, blindness, and nakedness, reduced, with the city of its habitation, to utter desolation and irrecoverable ruin and its site become the den of ferocious beasts, and the hiding place of reptile abominations. Laodicea was long an inconsiderable place, but it increased towards the time of Augustus Caesar. The fertility of the soil, and the prosperous circumstances of some of its citizens, raised it to greatness. Hero, who adorned it with many offerings, bequeathed to the people more than two thousand talents. And though an inland town, it grew to be more potent than the cities on the coast, and became one of the largest towns in Phrygia, as its present ruins prove. Chandler, in his Travels, page 225, says that Laodicea was often damaged by earthquakes and restored by its own opulence or by the munificence of the Roman emperors. These resources failed and the city, it is probable, became early a scene of ruin. About the year 1097, it was possessed by the Turks and submitted to Ducas, general of the Emperor Alexis. In 1120, the Turks sacked some of the cities of Phrygia by the Meander, but were defeated by the Emperor John Comnenus, who took Laodicea and repaired and built anew the walls. About 1161, it was again unfortified. Many of the inhabitants were then killed with their bishop, or carried with their cattle into captivity by the Turkish sultan. In 1190, the German emperor Frederick Barbarossa going by Laodicea with his army towards Syria, on a crusade, was received so kindly that he prayed on his knees for the prosperity of the people. Which prayer, as the future proves, was of no avail in heaven, for about 1196 this region with Caria was dreadfully ravaged by the Turks. The Sultan, on the invasion of the Tartars in 1255, gave Laodicea to the Romans, but they were unable to defend it, and it soon returned to the Turks. We saw no traces of houses, churches, or mosques. All was silence and solitude. Several strings of camels passed eastward of the hill, but a fox, which we discovered by the ears peeping over a brow, was the only inhabitant of Laodicea.